Hey guys, welcome to a trading new year. My name is Dave Huber and it is time for Tradeways. Welcome to the trading new year webinar. Blair Nightingale joins me today. Thank you for being on with me, Blair. Of course. And many of us have goals that we set at the beginning of the year. We call them our new year's resolutions and we are bound and determined to make some sort of change in our lives. And then the rubber meets the road. And so many times we find ourselves quitting mid-January, which is one of the reasons why we didn't do this January 1st. We're going to go a weekend. It's almost mid-January, I guess a quarter of the way through, right, Blair? And so we're going to talk about how do we keep our goals in sight? How do we keep moving forward? And uh, what can we do to eliminate just procrastination? How do we eliminate uh, getting away from the goals or, or getting sidetracked, right? Uh, pit stops. We don't want pit stops. We want to keep moving forward. And so that's what today is all about. We're going to talk about different types of goals. We're going to be talking about different things you can do to reach those goals. Everyone here has a goal of some sort. I suspect many of you have a goal regarding trading. So we're going to talk a little bit about the market as well. Uh, if you've noticed, uh, the S&P 500 has been kind of going a little bit sideways over the last couple of weeks. And uh, we're waiting on a razor's edge to see, are we going to get a fall or are we going to keep climbing higher? But while you are in a waiting period, and many of you will be, you'll be in a waiting period for some of your trading, especially if you're brand new. Uh, now is a good time to make a plan for your New Year's resolution regarding trading, regarding anything else connected to trading. And so that's what we're here to do today. Blair, thanks for being on with us. What do you think, man? Do you have some New Year's resolutions? Yeah, I do actually. And I started in December. Um, you know, I, I, I think um, we want to talk a little bit today. I mean, I, there's some things that I think we've all heard, you know, mm -hmm. but we want to add some things that give you partnership so that you can sustain. I, I've said this, I don't know, Dave, every year, maybe uh, around Tradeway when we talk about this and when we've had the opportunity to talk about this in January, I think maybe for me, I was a little... I'm going to loosely use the word offended. I don't think offended is the right word. But, you know, January comes and the thing is the New Year's resolution. And you got two camps. One camp is like, they're not even going to question it. They're just saying, it's time. It's a new year. It's fresh. That's great. Then you got the other ones that are kind of like, eh. You know, they're posting little memes about how here's the gym on January 1st, here's the gym on January 15th, and it's packed and it's empty. You know, it's more cynical. Um, the reality is, is while I've maybe fallen to either side of that at different times, the point I'm driving at is, is that, you know, we can use the energy, if you will, the buzz, the excitement, the focus, the cultural intention uh, at this time of year where people really do feel something fresh. Hey, man, I, I just got another year. I, I said to some students yesterday, some people count summers. This is how many summers I have left. Hmm. Some people count Christmases. I'm one of those people, Dave. I count Christmases, right? Um, and I'll just be real. You know, we got to see some of my family that just due to COVID and things like that, I hadn't seen in some time, quite a while. In fact, the longest stretch in my whole life. And, you know, time's a ticking. It is. And it, it doesn't have to be uh, cynical. It doesn't have to be negative. But, you know, our life is as a breath. This is what mm. the scripture says, right? It's here and then it's gone. It's like the grass, right? All flesh is like the grass. So um, intentionality is one of the things that has inspired me about Jesus since I met him 18 years ago. I only do what I see the Father doing. I only say what I hear the Father saying. Everything he did was in complete surrender, yes, but in complete intention and obedience. So we want to be intentional anyway, and this time of year is, is, is a time where we can, I think, draw some of that energy and go... Uh, and when I say energy, I just mean culturally, we're having this conversation. Let's go, hey, it's a new year. I got another one. I get another shot at this. I don't know how much time I have. I know what I want to do. Um, or maybe I don't know exactly what I want to do. I know generally what I want to do. Blair, Dave, can you help me know exactly how to put this thing together? Um, and, and I have aggressive goals for my finances. So 
let's run with that. So that's exactly what we want to do. We want to put some skin on that. Obviously, if you've been with Dave and I before, you know, you know, we want to edify, we want to inspire, but we also want to equip and motivate you to have some practical steps to put in place. So we'll share some things with you today that help you get inspired. You know, I think as Tony Robbins said that it's the problem isn't that you have goals. The problem is that you have impotent goals. They don't move you. Mm. Trying to force ourselves to have goals that don't move us, eh, it's hard. So there's a couple things we can do there. You know, we can inspire ourselves with what we really care about, you know, um, to do some of the things that maybe we don't care as much about, but they're necessary for the process. I also want to help you celebrate each stage of the process. Traders, I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but traders have the tendency to look at P&L, which of course is mm. ultimately the goal we need to be monitoring. But if all we do is look at the fruit system, we ignore the root system. And ironically, it's the root system that supports the fruit system. So you have to be able to celebrate, identify, implement goals that are more in what I call the root system of the trader than just the fruit system. Because if mm -hmm. you ignore the one to chase the other, you end up not getting the other so we need to to look at the one, but this one may not feel quite as uh, obvious. So we'll talk about that a little bit as well. Of course, we got plenty of people lighting us up in the chat. So thank you, everybody. I see some names in there that are familiar. I know many of you. I don't know all of you yet. We've got some new friends out there, Dave. We've got new friends coming in every single week uh, across the country. So thank you guys for chiming in on the chat. We got a couple people in the background from our amazing team here at Tradeway uh, that'll be helping and answering questions and things like that. So we'll keep our eyes on that. But that's where we're going to go today. Today, nice. Dave, we got some ground. <laughs> well, and you know, one of the things that you mentioned, Blair, is, you know, maybe I don't know what kind of goal I have. Well, goals can fall into lots of categories. And I like to group them into the areas of life because in each area of life, there are multiple goals that you could have personally for me this year, I've got spiritual goals, right? My spiritual goal this year, the breakthrough that I want is a higher level of righteousness. I just want to, I want to show the Lord that I can follow his word better this year than I did last year. Right. So I want, I want to really pursue righteousness this year, maybe a, a mental breakthrough type goal. Uh, mental breakthrough goals almost always equal confidence for me, right? Like I always want to have a higher level of confidence in the way I think uh, this year than I did last year. Yeah. Uh, emotional yeah. goal, more joy, a relational goal, more peace, physical goal, better health. For me personally, to get more specific, I want to put on a couple of pounds uh, yeah. of muscle weight. You know, I've, I'm trimmed down to my high school weight and I want to mm, beef it up a little bit. Financial breakthrough for me, that's a it's a different kind of freedom than I've had before. Um, I've I've reached some levels of financial freedom. I want to reach a different kind of level of financial freedom, specifically through ownership. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna go more specific into ownership. So I mean, you might have different areas of life that you have a goal in. It's okay to just pick one if you'd like. I suspect it's probably best to pick one goal in each of those areas. Cause you don't want to just be the same the next year as you were this year in any of those areas. Right. So spiritual, mental, emotional, relational, physical, financial, those are all great areas to focus on. And some of us are thinking, well, how do I actually start? How many of you have had a hard time starting something new? Hmm. Has anybody had a hard time starting something new? Got a couple of raised hands there, especially when it comes to to uh, finance or any kind of re resolutions whatsoever. We find ourselves going, "Well, I'm scared to make a New Year's resolution because I think I'll break the New Year's resolution." And starting something new seems like a big task. Well, there are two things that I want you to remember when it comes to starting, and this is going to help you have successful starts in any area, all right? So the first thing I want you to understand is that you don't have to be qualified to achieve anything that you want to achieve in any area. Like, I think of Moses. Moses, was he was called on by the Lord to do something 
pretty fantastic if you think about it, right? Like you're going to go and free my people. You are going to be a leader of a nation. That's huge. Like that, that's not a small goal of any type. Like, and, and keep in mind that Moses had run from the very nation that he's going to go and free the people from, right? And so he had run as a fugitive. God's going to turn the most unqualified person into a qualified leader. And if you'll remember when God comes to him and he says, this is Exodus, I'll read to you here, Exodus chapter three, come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel out of Egypt. And here's what Moses said, who am I, right? Like, who am I that I should go into Pharaoh? It's all about like, I don't have that identity. You might not feel like you've got the identity required to achieve what you desire, right? Like I want to uh, have better health, but I'm just not the type of person who is capable of it. I, I can't work out or I can't, my lifestyle is not conducive to eating healthy. I'm too much on the go, right? And we start saying, I am, I am, I am. And we connect the I am to the I can't. And we never accept, we, we never access the power that we need to achieve the goal that we desire. That's what Moses is doing. Who am I that I should go into Pharaoh? Guess what God's answer to Moses was? Does anybody know it? Put it in the chat. What was God's answer to Moses when Moses is like, who am I that I should go into Pharaoh? Mm. It's it's a really cool thing if you think about it. No takers, huh? Nobody knows. All right. God's answer. Here it is, verse 12. And he said, certainly, I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Israel, Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. So not only it doesn't matter who you are, what matters is who I am because I'm going to be with you. And that's what I want you to really take away is like when it comes to starting your goal, if you don't feel like you are capable, it's okay to not be capable. Moses was not capable. God was capable, and if you will partner with God in that journey, you will find a level of success. You go, okay, well, that sounds great, Dave, but it doesn't sound very practical. Trust me, it's the most practical thing you can do, but how can you do it? Well, let's let's look at what else Moses says, all right? Because once Moses receives this answer of, I don't, who am I, right? And, and God says, I'll be with you. Once he receives that answer, he goes, okay, but I don't know what to do. Listen, and Moses said unto God, behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? So Moses doesn't even know what to do. He doesn't know what to say. He's like, I've got no plan. God's answer, you tell them I am that I am. And he goes on, and I'm not going to read the whole plan because the next Let's see how many verses. The next eight verses are dedicated to God telling him every piece of the plan. He literally lays the plan out for him. So guess what? You don't have to be a qualified person. You don't have to be capable. You don't even have to have a plan. Now you go, wait a minute. I know I have to be intentional. How can I be intentional without a plan? Here's where I'm getting. Someone has the plan. All right. And God has a plan for you. Typically, the plan doesn't just come from within yourself. You play a part in the plan. Right. But if you don't know how to get where you're going, you need some help. You need some kind of mentorship. You need some kind of uh, someone who has done the plan before God. He's from the beginning to the end. He knows the whole plan. So he knows the steps you need to take for you. God is the same way, but you might not get that audible voice from a burning bush like Moses did, right? But he puts people in your life who've been through the walk that you're hoping to go through, and they have a plan for you. If it's financial, if it's in trading, guess what? Tradeway has a plan. We've been trading a lot. Here's what Moses says next. They think I'm crazy. That's what they'll think. That's what he says. Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice for they will say the Lord hath not appeared unto thee. All right. So Moses is like, they're going to think I'm crazy. Who remembers what God does next? Blair, do you know what God does next? I've been through this story quite a bit. 
Yeah. So what's he do? I'm stumped, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Moses, what's that in your he... hand? Yes, throw it down. Right? Throw it down. And he throws it down, and what happens? It turns into a snake. Forms, yes. Yeah, turns into a snake. Then he says, hey, put your hand into your bosom. Pull it out. His hand is leprous. Put Quite it back it's... in. Pull it back out. It's clean again. God's answer for when you think that others will think you're crazy. That, and that's probably going to happen. Blair, when you first started trading, did other people think you were crazy? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. My, my own dad thought that I was absolutely insane. Like, my, And he's one of our he's one of our coaches here at Tradeway now. But when I first started, he was like, mm, I don't know if this is a very good thing. Right? So how many of you got involved with Tradeway and you currently – can think of someone you don't want them to know that you are involved with a stock market education company. Be honest, be honest. I already got some thumbs up there. How many of, how many of y'all are like, yeah, I can think of a couple of people. I don't want them to know I'm doing this, but you plan to tell them once you become successful at it, right? Like that's really the goal. The goal is I'm going to go and make some money. And once I make some money, then I'll have the confidence to go and tell my friends and family. I, I get it, right? Like that's, that's what happens. The reason is we know that everyone else is going to think we're crazy, right? Pretty much the whole family says, Scott, he's like the whole family. You're, you're lone wolf in it, right, Scott? Okay, so here's what God's answer is to that. Cast your stick on the ground. Watch it turn into a snake. Put your hand into your bosom. Watch it turn into leprous. Do it again. Oh, it's clean. When you think everyone else is going to think you're crazy, God's answer is I'll show you crazy. You don't know crazy yet. Like you, th you might think you're crazy, but that's no excuse not to follow in the path that God's set for you. And so Moses's answer to that, I'm going to, I'm going to shorten it up real quick here, Blair, because I know you've got some content you want to get to, but Moses's answer after that is he says in the Lord, Oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. How many of you feel like you would love to start trading stocks, but you don't think you're smart enough at math, you know enough about business, you have no grasp on the market, you really don't have any, you, you begin to think of all the things you can't do when you think about a goal like trying to trade in the market. How many of you have already encountered that? I know when I started, I was like, mm, there's no way I could do that. Okay, we got, yes, that's me, right? Oh, yeah. All right, so when Moses says, I can't, here's what the Lord says. And the Lord said unto him, who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb or deaf or the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. When you think you can't, God says, I can. What's the scripture say? In my weakness, he is strong, right? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, right? Like it's by the power of God. He gives us a spirit of power and of love and of sound mind that we're able to do anything, including breathing, right? Like we can't even breathe without the Lord. He sustains everything. The word tells us that uh, by, by him, all things are made and all things consist. So he holds it all together. He's the one who empowers us to do the day-to-day. -day. So he is the one that we lean into when it comes to doing something like stock trading or anything else that you put your mind to. Moses' final uh, thing that he says, his final excuse, send someone else. He said, oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. He's like, go send somebody else. That's when God gets angry at Moses and it says that the Lord, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And I can just imagine, just think about what God's tone must sound like here. Because there's anger. There's anger. He's serious now. He's going to get, he's going to get firm with Moses. And Moses has given him excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse. And finally, God says, I know that Aaron can speak. 
And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart, and thou shalt speak unto him, and I and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what you shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto thy people, and he shall be even he shall be unto thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of a God. And thou shalt take this rod in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. It's so funny. I I, I begin to think of what he must have sounded like. And what we learn from that is that you can make excuses all day long. But if you are destined for change, all you're doing is prolonging the inevitable and you're just frustrating the Holy Spirit when he tells you to move and you don't. So let's make some changes. Let's be more like Abram when God said, get thee out of the land and away from thy kindred into a land that I will show thee. Abram didn't even know where he was going. He had no clue where he was going. All he knew is he was supposed to get up and go. And the next verse says, and Abram went. Right. And so he took unqualified action. He didn't say, well, I'll do this eventually. Or that's great, God, where are we going? Or can I see some literature on this? Or what's the success rate? May I talk with some of your other followers? No, he just got up and he went and he did it. And so I recently got over being sick, Blair, and so my voice is already starting to crack on me here. But um, that's part. That's what I felt like the Lord wanted me to share with you guys when it comes to starting these, these goals. Blair's going to take a very practical step-by-step -step approach and help give you the plan. Right? He's going to help give you the plan for reaching these goals. And so as you begin, just remember, you don't have to be qualified and you don't have to take qualified action. You just have to be willing because God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. That's great. Yeah. You know, like I said, guys, I'm going to hit some things rapid fire because I want to catch up to a couple things in the chat. So Dave's laying this foundation for us where we can have confidence. I was training with somebody last year. Dave knows this story. I'll keep it short, but I'll tell you one thing. One of his pieces of feedback, this, this man was not a believer. He said, Blair, less church, more business. And I think you're probably getting the idea right now that that's just not who we are. Mm -mm. Now, we could be imbalanced there, but no, right? Unashamedly, it's both. Why? I tell people all the time, guys, traders, you have the road conditions. That's the market. We got to learn about that, right? You want to know what's going on on the road because it's going to change the way you drive. Okay. Car right? That's your vehicle. Further, faster with less work. That's what trading is. That's why you're here. We want to get good mm -hmm. at that. Better brakes, better visibility, better handling, right? And so on and so on and so on. That's great. Most times that somebody's learning trading, that's what they focus on. But what we've learned and what anybody worth their salt has learned over time, in fact, I did a uh, continuing education course this past December that went into one of my favorite topics around trading, which is is behavioral finance, which is a fancy way of saying what's going on behind the eyes and between the ears, and that's the driver of the car. So we don't feel like God has just called us to equip you as traders in the sense of technical information. It has to be that. We spend 95% of our time on that. Mm -hmm. but the other 5%, okay, we're going to hit this pretty hard on we're human beings, most of you, if not all of you, on some level feel like this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. This is one of the things I want to partner with. I want to be a better steward. Whatever it was, however that happened, I can see people in the chat. Okay, I'm going to hit a couple of things quick, and then I got some stuff I want to say too. Number one, first of all, we had somebody in there say, hey, Blair, we heard you last year say, what do I need to leave behind in 2023 so I can actually pursue these new goals in 2024, which I'm going to hit on. Um, and, and, I, and I left alcohol behind. So I just want to celebrate you. I know there are other people in the chat with testimonies and things. Listen, you say, see, that's never going to come up in a list for people who are teaching stock trading. 
Nope. <laughs> but, but, but who you are in other areas of your life, strongholds, things that are pulling from your focus and your intention and your identity and your connection with Jesus, that's not going to work. It's not going to help you. I can teach you technical patterns all day long. And listen, I get it. Again, 95% of the time. But that's a huge thing. And that's a unique thing about our community, guys, because we want to celebrate you. Because if you get a breakthrough in one area, I tell you what, I tell people all the time, you want to talk about goal setting? We got another comment in the chat said, Blair, I'm a little discouraged this year. I haven't set any goals because I set goals last year and I didn't make them. So I don't want to set goals this year because I feel discouraged. So we need to be encouraged. And part of it is, is that we might be shooting at this thing, but the domino that most needs to fall is actually in this area over here. And if that one fell, these ones would start to fall. So we get freedom here to say, as Dave said, we get to have a relationship with God Almighty, who is the counselor, so that we know, right? One of the first things I wanted to say today is Proverbs 9, uh, 29, 18, where there is no prophetic vision. This is in the English Standard Version. The people cast off restraint. Hmm. No prophetic vision, which means what? The Lord, the Holy Spirit is helping us see what are you doing in my life? Mm -hmm. What are you, what do you have for me this year? And Dave said in each of these different areas, right? So finances, what are you doing in my life in this area, in this area? Because then I'm not doing what he's not doing. And sometimes as well-meaning believers, we double down on doing some of the things we think we should be doing. It's just not the thing he's doing because you're not spiritual when you do spiritual things. You're spiritual when you do what the spirit is doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, so good. if he's convicting you to leave something behind in an area that you didn't think was connected, just do it. Just Even do if it. it's a good thing, right, Blair? Of course it could be. You know, I say this all the time, right? Jesus said, and we, there's so much to get to, Dave, but Jesus said, new wineskins, old wineskins. You can't put new wine into old wineskins. What was he saying was the old wineskin, the old covenant? This is Mark chapter two. Well, who gave him the old covenant? Well, God, God did. did. What does Galatians say? right? Is the law bad? No, it's holy, righteous, and good, Paul says. Oh, holy, righteous, and good, and from God. But we need to move on into the fulfillment, which is the new covenant. It doesn't erase the old, it fulfills it. What am I saying? I'm saying sometimes, yes, even the things that came from God are things we need to move on from, and those, for believers, typically are the hardest things. Blair, why are you saying all this right now? Because somebody in the chat is representing probably a lot more people on this broadcast, both live and recording. And you feel like, as was said, I'm running in circles. So let me give you some things to do with that. Okay. We need to have a strong yes so that we can have a strong no. How does that happen? Vision. Mm -hmm. We need to have a vision. So Moses has an encounter. God speaks to him. Abraham has an encounter. God speaks to him. Your word is what cuts it clarifies, it empowers, it comes with it grace that gives me the ability to do after I heard it, what I couldn't do before I heard it. So I need to hear in order to do, you work in me to will both. It says both to will and to do your good pleasure. So what are we doing? We're hitting on this idea that human power every January makes a bunch of goals, but it's not enough. We need to partner both vertically, right? And this way, okay? To give us momentum, power to be able to continue. So um, Patty says, I, I made goals last year and I bombed. So I prayed, what do you want for this answer? And he gave, of course, his answer, okay? And you can focus in on that. And I'm gonna give you some practical tools here, Patty, because I believe these things can really help us this year. So where there's, this is number one. If you're note takers, jot these down. I'm going to move quick. Okay. I want to know the word of the Lord over every area of my life. I want to know the conviction. It's not just mental information. It's not just knowing, okay, uh, one goal, okay? It's going, this is where I'm going to, if I put my heart, mind, soul, and strength to that, I'm going to bump into him on the road. Mm. I'm going to receive grace in that area. That is the way to go. Okay. 
And I have a conviction when I'm in the face of opposition. I need that. I need to feed that. I was telling Dave before we got on the broadcast, my wife made a vision board. It's actually sitting literally in front of our TV. You couldn't watch the TV right now. I don't know. Maybe this is this is a word for me this year. I don't know, Dave. We don't watch a ton of it, but it's sitting right there. So the point is, is it reminds me. What did he tell Joshua? You got to say it. You got to think it. You got to read it. You got to meditate on it. You got to see it all day long. We have a whiteboard in our room. Okay. One side says my wife's name. One side says my name. What has the Lord highlighted for her, spoken to her? It's on her side, my side. We read it. When we get out of bed, when we go to bed, it's just right there because yep. you forget, you forget and you forget and you forget and it doesn't work. It need, we need to be calibrated. This isn't just spiritual discipline. There is discipline to it, but it feeds us. Okay. Now I'm going to, I'm going to move past a couple of things. We need to have that vision. Okay. If we don't have that with and from him, we're like somebody said in the chat, I have too many goals and I don't get any of them because I have too many. So I'm going to give you two tools. Number one, and you can work with a coach on this. What's the one thing that if that domino fell, it would have the single greatest impact on the other ones. The other ones matter. The other ones are important. But if that one thing was impacted greatly in this year, in this quarter, right? In one practical way, what would that do to all the others? That's the one you want to put at the top of the list. That's the one you want to bring before the Lord, right? That's where you need to get some of that vision. Because if you can do that, we're not a mile wide and an inch deep. A mentor said to me once, Blair, if you don't narrow your focus, you can't fulfill the call. We have to narrow. Focus is powerful. Some of us, that's exactly why we didn't reach the goals. And then the enemy comes and attributes it to all these, ah, you can't do it. Ah, you're not good enough. Ah, this doesn't work. Ah, da, da, da. And it's all this noise. And we could literally be battling. That's like our biggest battle is all the noise. And really, it's it's all nonsense, right? The actual thing is, no, you're just doing too much. Mm. You said too much, right? I'm going to give you a, a second thing. Remember, there's two stories in the scriptures. And they're two business miracles, by the way. Jesus speaks to the disciples twice, and they have a miraculous catch of fish. Once at the beginning of his ministry, once after his resurrection. And there is a major difference. This is in John 21, okay? This first happens, and it says, uh, it's, it's actually in Luke 5 in John 21. And in the one story, he tells them, even though you haven't caught anything, put down into the deep. In the other story, he says to them, Throw it on the right side of the boat. So sometimes we need to change the way we're doing it, the location we're doing it in, throw it on the other side of the boat, okay? Sometimes we need to go somewhere else. We need to do something else. We need to shift the location. We need to shift the focus. Sometimes we just need to go deeper. We need to go deeper. So I want you to ponder that for yourself this year. Everything Dave and I are presenting would be on the back of taking some time. We need to slow down and take some time because you need to get that vision. You need a strong yes so that you have a strong no. It says that those who don't have prophetic vision cast off restraint. They say yes. They're drawn into all kinds of things. Why? Because they don't have a vision to say, no, that's not part of my vision. That's not part of my vision. I'm going to stop filling my head with the life I don't want to live. And I'm going to stop filling my head with the things I'm trying to avoid. And I'm going to fill it with the things that God is telling me I am born for, I am doing, I am going after. This is why I'm here, right? And I don't know how many Christmases I have left. Not that it's fear-based, but there's urgency to it. And there's joy to it because we have another day. He's given us another day to do this. Okay, so I'm going to move somewhat from this big picture to say there's some areas where you need to go to the other side of the boat. There's some areas where you actually just haven't gone deep enough yet. You're doing the right thing. I'm not just saying try harder, try harder, try harder. Okay, we need partnership for that. But I am saying 
some things we need to do out into the deep. And some things it's like, Lord, am I on the wrong side of the boat here? Right? It might be one thing that you flip, change, alter. Okay. And that can make a huge difference. So let me give you a couple of things here, rapid fire, uh, that are going to uh, help us break through some of this. Uh, I'm just quickly checking the chat here. Yeah. Well, yeah. So let me, so let me chime in there for just a sec there. Yeah. Uh, we got Tracy says, as Dr. Myron G would say, sometimes we have to stop doing the don'ts before we can produce the do's. It's funny that you quote him. I'm sitting in his chair right now. I'm actually in Tampa, Florida, attending one of his events, and I had to step out. He's actually doing a live challenge in the other room. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot to that. And in fact, my, uh, Blair just, he just elaborated on that quite a bit. And that old things have to pass away, right? Behold, all things become new. I know that that scripture verse is talking more about... Um, it's more about the, the, the salvation experience, you know, that God has created something new in us. But the principle there applies in our our sanctification process as we go through our lives. God is cleansing us and continuing to, to uh, change things in our lives. Uh, one of the things that really uh, pops out at me whenever I hear that, got to stop doing the don'ts so you can start doing the do's. Ephesians chapter four tells us that we should neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, rather let him labor working with his hands, that thing, which is good that he may have to give to those in need. And what that shows us is that there, there are times in our lives when we are experiencing death Blair, he, he shared um, where there's no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint Right. And I love that in the ESV because it shows the our responsibility part of it. Right. If we if we cast off restraint, what that means is we no longer stay restrained and confined towards betterment, right? Towards more righteousness, towards more uh just breakthrough. We cast off restraint and we start just spreading ourselves thin. But when you have a vision, that doesn't happen. In the King James Version, it actually says, uh, where there's no vision, the people perish. That's because right. when you don't right. when you don't keep moving forward, you're experiencing death to some degree right there in your life. And so you've got to stop doing the things that are spreading you thin. You gotta you stop giving place to the devil in the particular area that you want. And that's that's the thing is we try to go and under our own might and under our own willpower say, I'm gonna achieve this thing. But in reality, We've not given the thing up to the Lord and said, Lord, I need to partner with you in order to get it done. And we should seek his word for empowerment in the thing. And when we do that, we no longer give place to the devil and we begin to change what we had done. Let him that stole steal no more. See the change? There's a change yep. in yep. the type of person you are. Rather, let him labor doing that thing with his hands, that thing, which is good, that's doing something different. And so that's what Blair is talking about. You've got to, you got to cast off, you got to cast off the, the old and yep. get into the new wine skins. Uh, one last thought here, Blair, we had a couple of people say, I, I started last year and some of us, we had some good things, right? Look at this. My, my computer's doing some funny things. Now, when I do a thumbs up, it's thumbs up. It's we the had math. some people say, uh, I started a, a goal last year and it didn't turn out great, right? And so now I'm scared to set goals this year. Mary is going to the grave to visit her Lord Jesus Christ in the grave, right? He he has died on the cross. She goes to the grave. She is met with an angel, face of lightning, right? Sitting on a rock. It it scares all the Roman soldiers pretty much to death. They lay down like dead men and she's in a place of fear and of sadness and of death. And what does that angel tell her? I know you seek the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not here. What does that tell you? God will meet you in your place of pain, but if you are dwelling on past failures, he's going to meet you there long enough to tell you he's not here 
He's going to tell you, turn around, and he tells her where he's going. And just like Blair said, if you are searching for the Lord, if you're searching for the Spirit, you hope to bump into him in the road on your way to the success that you seek. So, yeah, um, yeah I'll I'll tell Myron you guys said hi, and uh, I know he'll he'll be tickled pink about that. And, and the thing with that, you know, that I'll say for everybody out there, um, you know, one of the things I wanted to highlight, and we we did, we touched on it, which is what brought this up, is that you know I I mentioned in twenty twenty three, we talked about this on a prayer meeting in December, but I'll give this to you guys practically, okay? Imagine this with me quickly. <clears throat> this is huge for goals. This is huge for why people don't get out of January with this stuff, okay? If you use the same environment this year to pursue the goals that you're making that you used last year, you'll have the same impact, energy, and assistance this year that you had to help you reach those goals last year. So if you didn't do it last year, you're using the same energy this year. People make goals, but they don't think about their environment, number one, the environment of their life, relationships, setting, lifestyle, right? We talked a lot about connection to the Lord, right? We could go down a whole list of what makes environment. I talked about a vision board. I talked about something we have in our own bedroom that reminds us there's a there's hundred different things I could say. Environment. Some of you have goals and your environment in many respects directly opposes what you are trying to accomplish. A garden is cultivated to make growth normal. This is what we do in the Tradeway program, for example, right? Yep. So we don't plant you in an environment that's against it. We plant you in an environment that's for it. You think you're failing at your goals, but there's too many weeds. There's too many things, right, that are opposing that. So we could talk about that. But what I'm saying is to Myron's quote that we just talked about, what we talk about here is think of an athletic runner. I've used this analogy many times. Fully trained, ready for the Summer Olympics, sprinter, best in the world, right? We're talking maybe a decathlon athlete. That's 10 events, generally considered the world's greatest athlete, okay, if they win this decathlon at the, at the Summer Olympic Games, representing nationally, internationally. Okay, now put them in six feet of water. I don't care who you are. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how fast you are. I don't care how good your training is. I don't care about any of that at that point because it doesn't matter. There's too much resistance. And I think what Myron is driving at with the don'ts and the do's in part is to say, listen, you can have a lot of things right, but if, you, if you're standing in five, six, three, even two feet of water, you can't do what it is that you're actually able to do. And you think it's a problem with your training and your ability and your focus and your character. And really there are things hanging out in your life that are stealing that energy, momentum, drive, performance. And that's what I mean when I say constraints. What do you need to leave behind? Because if you think of that one domino I talked about, and this is what I love about the testimony our brother shared with us. Let me give you, you know, you that might be the domino for you. Mm -hmm. And if you press in as hard as you can and you persevere and you use all the energy you have, but some of those things are really just like, you know, uh, I think it was TD Jake said, you, you have to fix the mindset before you bestow the blessing. Some of us, like, it's like we have a hole in the bottom of our feet. We pour things in, it runs right out the bottom. Well, we ought to fix the hole right now. I understand we could take that many different ways, but I'm just using that as an illustration of that constraint. So let me give you an example. In our trading, listen, I've worked with people in our trading, guys. They think, oh, man, I'm not getting it. And I'm going, no, you are. You're getting it. I'm looking at your data. You've got some great work here. You've got some great trades here. Guess what? You don't stop out well. you got a couple of trades that are max losses. You're not emotionally controlling that. You're taking bigger losses. If we just cut those losses in half, you still took a, a loss that was too big, not what you planned, but you cut that in half. And that is exponentially moving you towards the goal that you had. And you didn't even change the other trades you did. You just got one bad habit. 
if we want to be good traders, we got to be good losers. That's a true statement, right? So that's one thing. And I want to move a little bit more into some of the practical here on that level. Okay. There's so much we could talk about in terms of getting specific goals. The main thing I would say is, is that that's what coaching really helps us do, guys, is work uh, on a one-to-one -one basis or, or even a, a smaller group of, of topics that we're going to work on that help you understand, well, in specifically in my finances and trading, you know, what's one thing that is going to limit the constraint, okay? That is a goal to be looking at this year, okay? So let me give you something else. Let's narrow this down. What was your biggest struggle in trading last year? What was your biggest struggle? Be as specific as you can. You want to write that question down. What was your biggest struggle? Because that's a great place to focus in on and say, that's where I'm going to make a goal for this and year. And losing money is not your biggest struggle. Nope. It's, it's got to be more specific the than biggest that. biggest struggle. And that's what I was, Dave and I were talking about this before we started. So I'll jump to that a little bit. P&L, profit and loss. Yes. <clears throat> Guys, that's the fruit system. That's why we're doing what we're doing, right? That's why you're here. Maybe you've traded a lot. Maybe you've never traded, but that's why we're here, right? That's what we want. Okay. We want to do that. We're going to move towards that. But you have to understand that one thing about trading, and this is true, I think, in just about anything, but it's definitely true in trading. We focus on the root system and that supports the fruit system. And it's too easy to focus on the fruit system at the expense of the root system mm -hmm. and then judge ourselves and say, I'm not doing it. It didn't work. I can't do it. Right. But if I focus on the root system, then the fruit becomes something that naturally can come from that. Okay. In trading, the root system is process. It's risk management. In fact, I'll read a couple of things here. There are stages to our movement as traders. You want to write this down. And, and I believe somebody in our team can comment in the back. This recording is going to be made uh, available to you guys. So I feel a little more freedom when I speak quickly uh, because I want to get this stuff to you guys. And I know you'll have the opportunity to watch this on uh recording because you could make goals in in each of these stages that I'm about to mention uh and it's not necessarily always okay connected to the profit and loss so Dave's comment uh did make money didn't listen you can do everything right in a trade everything right according to our system and you don't make money in that trade but you live to trade another day you did what you were supposed to do. And over time, over a series of trades and investments, okay, that discipline is the root system that you need, okay? But in any one single trade, you can do everything right and not make money and think, well, I didn't, I did everything I was supposed to do here. And the coach even said, hey, this was a great setup, but it didn't work. And, and then somebody else does everything completely wrong. If they did that over time, it's never going to provide that root system but in that trade, they made money, right? So we have to understand what trading really is and work the process. So what's that greatest constraint? What's the biggest question you had last year you didn't get answered? What's the biggest struggle you had specifically? Let me give you some things. Traders go through stages. The first one is foundation. You're just learning all the terms. You're learning the language. You're getting your mind in like, oh, this is the process of finding an edge, finding a trade. I'm not even doing it yet, right? I had somebody, Marty, in the, in the chat. I know they paper traded all last year. And one of their goals was to do a real money trade this year, okay? Now, everybody has different timeframes, but it took a year. But there's a good, solid foundation. That's foundation, and then I would say the second one is practical outset, which means you're paper trading. You're just pushing buttons. You're just getting out there. I tell people, sometimes people are afraid to even start paper trading. Blair, am I ready to paper trade? Yes. My answer is yes. Right now, I'm giving you all a blanket statement. Yes. It's okay. You're, you're ready. You're ready to start paper trading. Well, I haven't learned much yet. That's okay. You're going to learn more by doing, but it's paper trading. Okay. We are learning to just lay down some of the foundation, make mistakes, get it wrong, put
put the bricks in place, okay? There's some goals we can have there. I'm gonna have this many paper trades. I'm gonna get these reviewed for those of you that are in the Tradeway program. This is the benefit, okay? Then we move into emotional discovery. When I start using a little bit of real money, that's when the emotions start to come out. Do I tend to struggle with fear, greed? Do I stop out late? Do I sell profits early? Okay, what are some things that happen? I'm just discovering and it's okay because the money is not big. I'm not putting in a ton of money. I'm putting in little. I'm just getting data here. And then I'm working through that process. Yeah, but I haven't reached that big goal yet. I haven't done the, it's okay. Root system, root system. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Some of you guys, you have too many goals. So you're not getting any of them. Some of you guys are too general or too big. I want to make money this year. Okay, well, that's good. Let's put that at the top. Let's break that down. That's why I'm giving you, where are you in this process that I'm describing? Because you have goals within that that you need to focus on. So number one, you're getting rid of constraints. No, number one, you're getting vision with the Lord. So you're taking all these things that Dave and I are talking about, and you're going to spend some time with him and ask him to lead you. Today, we're going to have a prayer meeting at one o'clock. We do it there all the time. I started doing that so that I personally had time carved out to pray over this every week. And we got to invite you guys along. And now you get to be a part of that. So even there, we're providing those conditions for you. Okay. I remember I said 95% of the time, we're getting into the nitty gritty of charts and risk return and, and tickers and data and risk management and P&L and premise of the trade and you name it. But we're trying to give you a bigger picture here today, okay? So the next one, I said emotional discovery. The next one's emotional management. As I begin to bring the amount of capital I'm using into the trade and even up in the trade, how well am I doing in that emotional management? I told you one of the biggest constraints for some people is, is I'm doing everything right, but I'm not stopping out and that's flipping my PL upside down. It's just one example of emotional management that we grow in. Trading is 90% mental. It's emotional and mental, okay? And most of us, that's most of the work we need to do. So this is why it's such a conviction for me to say that all these other areas that Dave is talking about and I'm talking about and we're celebrating in the chat is because actually you're the driver of the car and whatever's going on in you as the driver of the car, I've got to plug in here, Dave, uh, is something that is going to affect your trading, right? Plug it in, there we go. Okay. Then the next one is continued growth, right? Continued growth. Now we're starting to see some mastery in an area. We're getting expertise. We're not a mile wide and an inch deep, right? We're going deeper and we're learning. We're pushing to new ceilings. Now we're starting to see some of those monetary goals get knocked off. Now we're wanting to stretch into some other strategies, right? Expertise, things like that. So that's where you are. And within where you are, you can set some goals. Quick recap. Number one, I need vision. Do I need to do something different or do I just need to go deeper? Okay. What's some of the things, one main thing that you need to leave behind in your trading, in your life in 2023? You need to leave it behind. It's an old wine skin. You can't put new wine in it. If you persevere in, the, in that area, you will not get the breakthrough. Perseverance is character, but perseverance without adjustment is folly. We cannot always do the same thing. Okay. So persevere, but persevere with input, persevere with adjustment, persevere with surrender, persevere with fill in the blank, right? We're making adjustment. So we got to leave something behind. Okay. Number one. And that might be the main thing that you work on in this first quarter in this year. That might be your main goal. Okay. And then we begin to narrow it down. What was my biggest struggle? What's my biggest question? What excited me the most? What excited me the most? Okay. There are some new things I started at the end of last year, some markets and some, and some uh, instruments, I'll say, that I've never traded in that I started practicing, literally just practicing paper trade. It's in a different uh, application and I'd never done it before. So I do the same process and it's exciting. It's fresh right? This isn't silver bullet theory, right? Where we just jump to something new all the time, just because that's too broad. We have to go deep. But I was at a point where I could do that. So, so that's something that I've implemented and it, it's energy, it's excitement, right? 
you're going to find the way that you like to trade. Okay. Now I want to talk one thing and I'll, and I'll take a breath here for you, Dave. Uh, this is my biggest thing in goals. <clears throat> and I said it already. You can set a goal that is an outcome. That's usually the goals. It's, it's the fruit, right? And that makes sense. Okay. But what if you made some of the goals that you're making, the fruit that you want to see, the environment that you're going to trade in this year, the environment that you're going to train, T-R-A-I-N, in this year, okay? Uh, Dave's heard me say this so many times. You know, when we, when we want to plant tomatoes, we do it in a garden. And whether you're a gardener or not, you will cultivate the environment or you would expect somebody would do so. You would have sun, but not too much, water, but not too much. If it's outside, obviously, you're going to want topsoil and fertilizer, and you're going to want to put a border around it, and probably some underlay. And if it's tomatoes, you know, you're going to need something for the vines to grow up on. You're going to do all this stuff to protect it from, you know, rabbits and, and animals. And you're going to do a dozen or so things that are just like, oh, well, we've got to do this because that's what makes it grow. But what's funny to me, Dave, is humans try to do it and they go, well, this is the environment of my life, whatever it is. And I'm about to add something new. I want a new breakthrough, new growth, new outcome, new fruit. But I'm not even going to think about the environment it's really growing in. I'm just going to say this is my life and it has to grow within those conditions. And then you find, oh, wait a second. This might be more transformational than I even first thought. Because in order for this to work, God wants to move some pieces around. He wants to cultivate some other things, right? Yeah. Now, we want to fixate and focus on the trading, obviously. I get that. But the point is, is some of those things, those are what need to change. Coaching, teaching, prayer, encouragement, discipline, scheduling, goal setting, process, tracking, tracking your results, journaling, accountability, sharing what you're doing with other people, quote unquote, coaches. You know how many of our students are are nervous, despite the fact that we we've said many many, and we'll continue to say this many many times. Hey, we're here for you. There's no wrong question. There's no wrong answer. There's no mistake that's going to make us go. Oh my goodness, I can't believe Dave did that. What is he thinking? No, it's not like that here, right? There's an openness. Because we know you're going to need insight, oversight, accountability, input, right? Yeah. I'm I'm listing different uh, environmental conditions that you need. Dave talked about how many people, your family's going to think you're crazy. You know what I thought of? I thought of when Jesus goes and he raises that little girl from the dead and he says, oh, she's not dead. He's just, she's asleep. And they laugh at him. Yep. Now, I understand that's a pretty intense example, but they laugh at him. And what does he do? He sends them out of the room. Yep. Okay. If God is doing, I'm not saying we're isolated and secretive, but when God is doing something or when you set your heart to do something that you have a conviction for, surround yourself with people who build you up, build mm -hmm. you up in faith. Now, some of those situations are a little more complicated than others. I get that. I get that. But to the best of our ability, and we can always bring it before Jesus, I want an environment that's conducive to the breakthrough that I'm going to get, right? That's yep. very important because in the garden, what have we done? Why have we done that with the conditions? We've just created an environment where growth is normal. Yep. And that's what we want to do for you. And so that could be the goal that you need to make. Last thing I'll say, Dave, I know I said that already. Some of you guys, you need the concept of burn the ships. Mm -hmm. Very quick, 1500s, Cortez lands in the new world. He knows, he knows that the days ahead, the road ahead, okay, are going to be very, very difficult. What does he do? He burns his ships. He sends one back to Europe and he burns the rest of them. There's no way they can go back. And sometimes... 
The only way we're going to have the commitment to truly go forward is to cut off every way to go back. Those who put their hand to the plow and look back are not fit for service in the kingdom of God. It's the idea of we count the cost and we go all in. Hmm. Count the cost of not changing anything. Count the cost of not growing. Count the cost of having the same results. Count the cost of blank. You fill in the blank. Not to be depressed and down and no, to 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 say, what do I really want? I'm working towards vision here, yep. right? And if I really took an inventory of what I've, what I have had, right? And what I could have, what's available, what's offered, and what the difference between those two is, that can provide some of us who don't necessarily feel that motivated with a whole lot of motivation, right? No doubt. And so we might need to say, I need some massive action here. Mm. See, the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So one foot in, and in, in you get to hear from the Lord. You get to decide for yourself what's right for you and, and where you want to go. But the point is, is that if you have decided you want to do something, it says if you don't stand in firm, firm in faith, you won't stand firm at all. I can tell you from personal experience, when I'm in one foot in, one foot out, I don't have any power. Nope. You say, well, I made the goals, but I didn't get it. Well, okay, maybe you made too many goals. Maybe it was just a P&L kind of thing. Maybe you focused all on fruit, not on root. Maybe the conditions aren't working for your growth. Maybe you're still halfway in the other thing and halfway in the new thing and all the way in nothing, right? So those are some assessments I would make, Dave, that help us go, all right, I need to make some goals within those things. Uh, but one of those might speak to me more than the others because it's kind of hitting. I'm going, oh, yeah, that's me. All right. Uh, that 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 helps me. We want to cast off the weight that entangles so that we can run the race. Uh, and then the goals. And then January, right? Yeah. It doesn't have to be a limitation at all because we've actually used the momentum of January to create new environment, perspective, habits, and that's what takes us through. Because, you know, some of us, the reason we we didn't reach our goals isn't because we weren't doing the right thing. It's because we did the right thing too short. Yep. We needed to stick with that's it. True. And we didn't have the energy to do that on our own. And, you know, it's okay to throw all of your energy, 150,000% of it, to that one big domino goal that you're talking about. Because when you knock that one over you will find new energy to get the other ones as well. And some of you are thinking, man, I, I want to do this. I want to have uh, the right conditions. I want to have the, the right commitment. I want to have the right community for reaching these goals. And every time I try to start, I find myself doing it alone, often because I, ha I don't have anybody supporting me, right? I'm doing this by myself. I don't want other people to know because all they're going to do is make fun of me. I feel unqualified. I feel... Um, just alone. If that's you and you say, Hey, I want some help with the plan. I want some help with the conditions. I want some help with the community. I want some help staying committed. Then guys partner with Tradeway. We are here to help you. We have a way for you to do that. There's a couple of different things you can do. We'll put the link in the chat. I'll have Misty put it in the chat for you. First step one, start your journey. If you have no clue where to start in your financial journey and you want to learn all the ins and outs of stock trading. And you say, I'm not even sure what the stock market is. This particular event will help you know what the stock market is. It will help you understand how to approach it, how to approach it with wisdom, how to partner with God and with other Christians in the process of doing so. It will teach you how to uh, choose stocks, how to figure out which stocks are the right stocks to get into, which ones to avoid. It will teach you how to money manage. It will teach you how to protect your investment when you get into a trade. It will give you a step-by-step -step plan for knowing what to trade, when to trade, how to trade, why to trade. That's the step one, start your journey event. If you're not already a part of it, there's a link there in the chat uh, posted by Misty for that. The second way you can get involved, and this is more 
Uh, for those of you who have already gone through the step one, start your journey, and you want to partner with us in the community and get some help uh, moving forward after you've started learning, it's our memberships. And uh, I'll have Misty put the link there in the chat for you as well. There's a brochure. That first link is a brochure for what the memberships are all about. But this is where you get access to our community. You get access to special um, special uh, educational components that you won't get anywhere else. You also have access through our memberships to our special trading software called Charts by Tradeway. Uh, you have access to coaches, mentors, other students who are trading as well. You have like a Facebook for stocks, which is really cool. You'll you'll get access to a, uh, we call it Netflix for stocks. It's like a learning portal where you can get in and you can you can binge watch some, some educational components. That step one, start your journey will be in there uh, for you if you take advantage of the step one, start your journey uh, product there. And so you've got two different ways that you can get some help, get some partnership and have someone who's been through the walk, who's gone through the fire and can say, hey, step here, step there, watch for, out for that over there. And we're going to not just partner with you intellectually. We're going to partner with you on a spiritual level. We're going to say, hey, look, just because you're Christian doesn't guarantee you success. That's just not the way it works. The promise of wealth is a conditional one. And we have to partner with the Lord in a very particular manner. And one of those manners is to get more righteous. We've got to walk righteously before the Lord. And, uh, and so we're going to talk about how can we do that? How can we find the strongholds that are in our hearts and in our minds that are taking away from our focus and from our determination? Like our friend shared, he gave up drinking. Praise the Lord. That must have been a stronghold. You don't know what the root system really needs. It really needs cultivating, guys. It really needs cultivating. And we want to partner with you to cultivate that root system. And then, Lord willing, we will see some tangible profits along the way, but you're going to find some nonprofit victories in your search to change your life financially. And so it's going to be worth your time. It's going to be worth your effort. It's going to be worth your intellectual power, your energy. It's going to be worth the money that you pay to be a part of it. And it's going to be an incredible journey that we feel blessed to help you with. So uh, please be on here. Uh, We'll be doing a, I guess you're about to do a, a prayer meeting. Is that right, Blair? Yeah, in 52 minutes, we'll be on. In 52 yeah. minutes. Okay, so you'll be doing that here in about 52 minutes. There's also a link up there. Misty just put it in for you again. And uh, Blair, did you have anything else you wanted to say before we let yeah, everybody go? I do. I have one last thing I put in there, I think, just to to finish this off. Because I really want to encourage people and and I want to raise the bar. Right, I want to raise the standard for everybody, and myself included. And and, and actually, we'll have some uh, different things coming in this first quarter that we're going to help you partner with us on this, um, just so you see what it looks like, sp specifically, practically. But I, I just put it in the chat here. I said one last thing: get very methodical. Mm, very, that's good. I, I, think it's, I think sometimes we don't realize. Uh, and, and and this has to fit into everybody's lifestyle, but I think we don't realize necessarily how far we can take this, right? Yeah. Like literally, and Dave and I just didn't have time for this, but it's the hobby versus the business. Not to yep. say that people out there are necessarily trading or treating it like a hobby, but even when we don't have that intention and we don't have, um, we have a lot of the things that maybe aren't hobby habits, uh, but there's still enough of that hanging out there where it's making an impact. So I just said, very methodical from a.m. to p.m., morning to night, every week, right? What what will the weekends look like? I'm not saying you got to do 10 hours every day. I'm not saying that. But you know, what does each day look like? What exactly am I doing this week? I have a quarterly goal. I have a monthly goal. I have a weekly goal. And I know this week, it's not just I want to make money. That's what Dave said, right? Too broad, too general. It's not going to help you. That's the ultimate goal. We can have those goals, but there's always process goals within that. So very methodical. Where and when am I doing everything? Monday through Friday, you know, right? Okay. Then where and when am I getting input into that every week? Mm, yep. Every week. 
if you want to get serious about that, right? I have input every week, not just is this a good trade or not? That's good. But your process, your thinking, your habits, your weaknesses. Every new week, I should be able to look back at the last week and go, that was the main challenge I had. That's the main thing I got input on. This is the main thing I'm implementing new this week. Mm -hmm. You have minimum 52 new lessons that you are learning and implementing every year in your trading minimum so that not a single, and I understand we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Right. But not a single second week comes and goes where I did the exact same thing the second week that I did the week before, assuming that, you know, the week before wasn't what I wanted it to be. Okay. It doesn't mean we're always changing the whole thing. Right. I, I, even if, oh, I talked to Dave and Dave said, actually, what I think you need to do is stop changing the whole thing. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm implementing in week two, so to speak. But you see what I'm saying, Dave, right there. And, and so I can say in one or two sentences every week, this is the thing that I learned and got input on last week. And this is the thing I'm doing this week and how. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do it again and again and again. And again, and again, and again, and again, Blair, you're being dramatic. Yes, I am. Because I want to hammer that thing, mm -hmm. right? Because again, that perseverance piece, it turns to discouragement. It can, it, it can. can, right? So that's something we want to have every single time, every when, single time. When we find ourselves persevering, it's usually when we're stuck, Right. And so if you get stuck, sometimes you don't even know what to ask. You're like, I, I'm stuck. I don't know why I'm stuck. I don't know what questions to ask. That's one of the things we help you with at Tradeway. Just tell us you're stuck. We'll start asking you questions. Right. And we'll start knowing what you need to do based on your answers. Sometimes Some you sometimes right. you don't even know you're stuck. You get to a point where you're like, I, I, I'm doing okay here. Maybe this is it. And we know you need to be stretched a little bit more. Right. That's something that we can help you with. If you get discouraged, we'll encourage you. And so that's why we're here. Yeah. I would say for some of us, that might be your biggest constraint. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't, you don't have any input. You measure 99% of the time and you adjust 1% of the time. Or mm -hmm. you measure 65% of the time. Right. Yep. You're still, it's, it's it, more adjustment, less measurement <clears throat> in right. some cases, but we need to, that's the power of coaching guys. That's why we have programs. Cause as you can tell in the chat, some folks, and we'll sign off with this, uh, um, you know, you, you need like, Hey Blair, look at my situation. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's what we do. So hopefully we were able to, uh, as we said at the very beginning, inspire you. I see some comments in the chat. People feel like, hey, I got something out of this. I'm encouraged. I'm motivated. I think it was Zig Ziglar who said, you know, some people say, what is it? Motivation doesn't last. It, it, it's like a shower. I recommend one every day, right? It's like, we need it every day. Ah, oh, those conferences, ah, oh, it just wears off. Well, then get some more, Yeah. right? Get some more. Oh, you know, I spend time with the Lord and then the next day I'm like, I need more time. All right, good. Get some more time. Some things you're going to have to, listen, you want to climb a mountain. You just got to keep walking. Yep. So, so let's do it together. All right. Appreciate awesome. you guys. Thanks, Dave. Thank y'all for being on. Really appreciate you joining us for welcome to the trading new year. Can't wait to see what you do with some of the goal setting that you've started. Hopefully some of what Blair and I shared today will help kind of keep you moving on it down the right path. But like I said, if you need any more partnership, check out our memberships. It's the best way to partner with Tradeway. We're here to help. Thank you all again. Lord bless you. We pray for the work of your hands and we will ask the, that God will just uh, bless you bountifully this year. Thank you all again. We'll talk to you later and then we'll see you in the market. All right. Thanks guys. See ya.